sound good together. It's yeah. good. Amen. <laughs> All right. If you uh, have your Bible with you tonight, and I hope you have, if you turn to the book of uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, and um, verse number 17, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and verse number 17, the divine text says, Now in this that I declare to you, I praise you not, that you come together not for the better, but for the worse. Now he's going to criticize them, point out the problem. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must also, for there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, every one taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have you not houses to eat and drink in? Or despise you the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Father, bless this book now. In your holy name, amen. You can be seated. The Apostle Paul goes into the Lord's Supper. He convicts them, or convinces them of their, of their um, uh, I guess you, the best word would be for a heretical uh, actions that uh, they have... Uh, have uh, devolved into sectarianism, and it continues throughout the book of Corinthians, those who have and those who have not. And that's always a problem. James deals with it, and, and he speaks very clearly to the point. He said, if they're coming to you one well-dressed, you lift him up and give him the highest seat in the house. But if one comes in, he's not all that well-dressed and doesn't show uh, monetary ability, then you give him the lower seats. It not so should never be in the church of God because you don't judge people by how much money they've got. As a matter of fact, we don't shouldn't be spending our time judging each other anyway. Amen. What you should be doing is bearing one another's burdens and yeah. fulfill the law of Christ and lift yeah. each other up. And uh, a man's uh, a man's worth is not measured by his bank account. And the Word of God is very clear on that. And here in First Corinthians. Of course, you've heard it said many times. He's talking about a love feast that they used to have. No question about that. And uh, it, for the, God's people to get together in fellowship and, and eat together and talk together and so forth is a good thing. There's no, there's, that's a good thing. And uh, sometimes you can start off with a simple thing like that and then you can get into some real fellowship with each other. And uh, I think that's a good thing. But what you're dealing with here in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11 is uh, leading up to the Lord's Supper. And uh, the Apostle Paul wants them to understand. Let's, uh, let's go with me here in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Yeah. Now, if you read John chapter number 6, you have to understand that he said, if, you're not, if you don't drink my blood and eat my flesh, you have no part in me. And today, to this very day, you have churches that have, uh, they turn the, 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 the bread into his body. They turn the wine into his blood, and therefore they take of the body of Christ, they think, by doing that. That's what's called transubstantiation. Yeah. And literally taking uh, something that's physical like this and mystic mystically turning it into the body of Christ. First of all, you don't need to eat the body of Christ. You don't need to drink his blood. There's been one sacrifice for sins forever. He sat down at the right hand of the Father. You don't need to be constantly taking of the Lord's Supper if you think that's going to save you. And these churches, of course, they, if they, if, if they, they, hold, they hold power over you by saying that your salvation is in this Lord's Supper. And if you're not, if, if we, if we, if we, if we refuse to let you take it, then therefore we're refusing you salvation. And this is how they control people. And folks, we don't do that. This has nothing to do with that. He said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. 
It's a memorial. It's not salvation. Uh, if you're not saved when you start with it, you won't be saved when you're finished with it. But the truth of the matter is, if you'll follow what the Bible says about it, it can draw you close to God. And if you're not born again, it can bring you to a place of conviction where you understand what the purpose of Christ was. He said, as oft as you eat this bread, drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. So it's a remembrance. But not only that, being a memorial, it is a prophecy because it's looking into the future. So it looks into the past and into the future. It's what we call in a Baptist church an ordinance. And the reason they do that is because we want to take any of this, any idea away from this, that there's anything in here tonight that's saving people. This will not save you, my dear friend. The person of the Lord Jesus Christ was, is, and will always be the Savior. Always, always, always. The Lord Jesus Christ, there's only one name under heaven whereby we must be saved. But this we do in remembrance because it reminds us that he gave himself for us. He gave his body and he gave his blood. Yeah. Amen. He took the Lord's su he took he took the Passover and he constituted the Lord's Supper from it. And if you notice, it's quite, it's quite a remarkable thing too when you think that this is the church at Corinth that this is written to. And you don't find much of this in the New Testament about how they went about the Lord's Supper. But this is what we have here. The church at Corinth was one of the was one of the <laughs> You, you don't lift them up very high. They, they had a lot of problems. They had people, uh, they had in 1 Corinthians 5, chapter 5, a man had his father's wife. They were drunken. They were, uh, they, they were sectarian. They, they didn't accept the authority of the Apostle Paul. The church at Corinth had, uh, they, had they, they abused the spiritual gifts. And uh, many of them were, were saying that they were speaking in tongues. And uh, that's an issue tonight that you need to get on your knees and ask God to show you. What does the Bible say about tongues? What, what, what really is tongues in the Bible? And I've done that, done it more than once. And I always come to the conclusion it's a language. Right. Amen. It's what we find in Acts chapter number 2. So we have a problem with that. We have a problem with all kinds of problems. But it's remarkable how that it's the Lord's Supper that's mentioned in the book of Corinthians. It could be that God's a gracious God and he gives you what you need, even though you don't ask for it. He gives you what you need. And that's what he's doing here. He's giving these people what they need. He said in verse number 28, well, let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. In plain words, if done correctly, this can be a wonderful spiritual experience for you tonight that will draw you closer to the Lord. Yeah. And if you have sins that need to be confessed, confess them. And when you walk out of this house tonight, you can be in closer relationship with the Lord and fellowship with God than you were when you came in. Amen. And that's a good thing. Yes, that's a very good thing. Amen. And so he says in verse number 29, he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. All right, now this has to do with what he's doing. This has to do with taking the Lord's Supper, Supper and turning it into a drunken feast. That's what's happening here with some of them. He said, some of you, verse number 21, you're drunk. Drunk. <laughs> Can you imagine? And you imagine going to church and the fellowship and, and you walk in and everything's fine. Then they got to carry you out the back door because you're, you're drunk. And that's church is not the place to come to get drunk. Amen. Fact is, there shouldn't be any place you're going to to get drunk. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, but anyway, this is what he's saying. You, you're not discerning the Lord's body. It's not for the nourishment of the flesh or the feeding of the sensual desires of the body. The Lord's Supper is a spiritual introspection of your soul to take a good look at who you are and what you believe. And that's what we do tonight. And that's what we will do is take it and look and pray and ask God to show us if there, as David said, if there be any wicked thing, any wicked way yeah. in us. And God is a good God. And then he said, but if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Why? Because many of you are asleep and you're sickly. In plain words, this can be a very, very, uh, I hate to, I don't try to scare you away from it. That's not the point here tonight. But be, be solemn when you do this. Right. Have the right spirit about you. Because if you come in here with a nonchalant cavalier attitude, like, you know, you can just do as you please and say as you please, 
This is not the place to do it. This is not the time. You know, this is not a softball game out in the backfield here somewhere. This is, this is the Lord's Supper. And so he said, He that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So it's obvious that he has left things for us in the church that are sacred, that are sacred. You're not discerning the Lord's body. This, what it stands for, to, for what this stands for tonight, can, can be nothing greater. It stands for the one who died for us and gave himself for us. Yeah. Amen. That's what it represents. And this is what we should do tonight. He said, if we're judged, we're chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned of the world. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Have you noticed the progression in this? God says in verse number 21, some of you are drunken. All right, what happens? Well, he judges them. Does that mean he kills them right off of the No, no, no. God's, God's a long-suffering, gracious God. Yeah. Yeah. See, notice what he says here. He chastens. It takes time to chasten someone. See, then it takes time to chasten them. Yeah. But if you will not endure chastisement or chastening, God can no longer deal with you as with a son. He deals with you as a what? <laughs> yeah, illegitimate. This is what's going on here. But he said, when you're judged, you're chastened of the Lord, that you should not be condemned of the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home. That you come not together under condemnation, the rest will I set in order when I come. Father, bless this holy word tonight. Bless it. Bless it, our Father, to our soul and to our spirit. Lord, may we approach now what's going to happen as a great gift and a blessed privilege that you've given to us. But of all things, Lord, it reminds us of what you've done for us, and it points to the future when you're coming for us. Bless your word and bless it to the hearts of the people in Jesus' name. And while our heads are bowed tonight, maybe you'd like to pray. Maybe you'd like to come down here and pray. I don't know what you, it's up to you what you want to do. But if there's any, any doubt in your mind that you need to get some things settled with God, it's a good time for that because it's good for that. That's what this is about. It's, it's something that he's given to us to make sure that we look deep within our soul. And therein God blesses and he, he draws you nigh to him. Christ Jesus did not die on the cross to condemn you, folks. He died on the cross to save you. Amen. Amen. He said, I did not come into the world to condemn the world. God didn't send him into the world to condemn it. He sent him into the world to save it. He's the Savior. Amen. Amen. Father, we come before you and thank you. Lord, you know my soul and my spirit, for a, not for a moment do I feel like tonight that I'm worthy to take anything or do anything before you. What I have tonight you've given me, what I am I am by the grace of God. I'll never rise any higher than how you lift me from this world. My Heavenly Father, tonight I give you my body, I give you my mind, I give you my spirit, I give you my soul. I give you all that I am. Whatever I am, I am by the grace of God. I cannot lift myself by my bootstraps. I cannot save myself. I cannot keep myself saved. I can't do it, Lord, but I trust you, and you said you would, and we bless you. Now, Father, tonight may this be a blessing to the people. My Father, when they come the right way, they have the right spirit about them. They seek and search their soul. May it be a good thing. May it bless them. And may they leave out of here tonight closer to you than when they came in. I pray this now in Jesus' name, in the name of the blessed Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed above all. In his name I pray, amen, amen, amen. 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 God bless you folks, every one of you. Amen. 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 All right, brethren, will you go ahead and remove the, uh, the cover there?
Brother Caldwell, would you lead us in prayer? Yes, yes. We need our hearts and our souls laid upon the altar, Lord. Yes. That we would be clean before thee, God, to get a man, but God, that we would, Lord, be to please thee, Lord, and thee only, Lord. We're thankful, Father, for this opportunity to stand here, Lord, and partake of this sacred, sacred thing, Father. We thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for all you do, and I pray now that you bless this time, Lord. Bless these people, Father, your people. Blessings on in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Would you men take the instruments and serve tonight? Brother Mike Berry, would you lead us in prayer, please? Father, we just thank you for staying. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come to your house today. Lord, just please be with us tonight. Lord, we just want to thank you for your prayer. And thank you for everything you do for us. Lord, we don't deserve any of this. But I know that you do it for us because you love us. And I just ask you to please continue to be with us today. We need your service. Lord, love you and thank you. Amen. Amen. The scripture says that when he, 
I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Brother Caleb Wilson, lead us in prayer, please. Father, thank you for your son. He's worthy. Lord, thank you for the stripes. Cat of nine tails, the thorns. The piercings on your hands and your feet. On your side. Amen. All right. Amen.
Brother Phil Miller, will you please ask the blessing? The scripture says, after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as oft as you drink in remembrance of me. The apostle says, for as often as you eat this bread, and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. We have many people watching us right now online as this streams. And they don't have access to the bread and the wine. But I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you that God will come to you and that you can feel the same spirit wherever you are that we have in this building tonight. Amen. My father... Bless those dear folk that are watching us right now as this streams. We have no idea where it goes, but that's not important to us. What's important is that they're watching and they're receptive for the Holy Spirit to bless them tonight as if they were with us in this Lord's Supper. Bless them, touch them. God, may they be moved in their heart and in their soul. Lord, lift them up and may they receive the spirit that's in this house tonight from this supper that we've just partaken of. In your holy name, I pray, amen. And may God bless you and every one of you in this house tonight. Brother Tom Berry, would you please lead us in prayer? Amen. Amen. This was a joyous occasion. There should be great joy in this because if our Lord Jesus Christ was in a tomb, there'd be no joy. But the fact that he arose, that he arose and he's coming again, it is that empty tomb that gives us victory. Vic victor over death, hell, and the grave. As the apostle said in 1 Corinthians 15, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Amen, 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 amen. <laughs> it's been swallowed up by the power of the resurrected Christ. He lives in my soul tonight. That's his righteous name. Amen, amen. Brother Rick Owen, lead us in prayer, please. Yes. Thank you for the body. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. I was told this morning there may be some folks who want to join us tonight as we had folks this morning that joined us here in the church. We'll give you just a moment if you would like to. This this would be fine. And uh, if not, that's all right. Whenever God leads you to do something, don't ever feel pressured here at Temple Baptist Church. When you look at that wall right there, there are no numbers on it. Amen. Amen. No numbers. So let's sing a verse. And then while we're singing this verse, we'll give folks, if they'd like to come, give them an opportunity to join with us tonight. Amazing Lord. grace. Amen. amen. Everybody should know that one. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. 
Folk here, this is Mike and Gina Wood, and their children Adriana. And is that is that correct? Yes. Adri Adriana and Michael. Amen. They're coming by letter from Kingsway Baptist Church in Nickelton, New Jersey. Everybody knows where Nickelton, New Jersey is. I'm sure. Amen. Amen. And so we, they're coming tonight's letter. What's the, what's the pleasure of this fellowship on receiving them? All right. Motion's made and seconded. Those in favor, show up with lifting the right hand. Amen. Well, then come by now and shake hands with them. Give them the right hand of church fellowship and uh, let them know how much you appreciate them being here. Amen. Good family. I love families, folks. I love families because there's an assault on the family today like you wouldn't believe. I see a mom and a dad and two kids right there. I rejoice. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's pray, and we'll let you go. Father, thank you, Lord. Bless this dear family. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.